Is parkour... Wow. Is parkour on YouTube dying? Actually, hold up, wait. No, this this won't do. We're going outside. Oh, much better. So, in 2020, parkour videos on YouTube seem to be getting less views. As opposed to maybe six years ago where they used to do really well. I was on Instagram the other day and I saw this story post kind of acknowledging that. A chap by the name of Masha.pk had saved up all his best parkour clips and he thought, you know, I'm going to make a really good parkour video and then post it to YouTube. He did that and the video tanked. I've decided to come outside and film this video for a change. I'm just gonna overlay a few clips of me training. And so that you don't get bored of that, I'm gonna put some clips of actual good free runners so you can watch them as well. To really look at this properly, we need to go back a few years to when parkour started to feature on Instagram more. In the early days of parkour on Instagram, people were just doing what they did on YouTube, but on Instagram. So they would make these one minute training videos edited to music. A lot of these videos would have lifestyle clips, fun things, the stuff you would see on YouTube parkour videos. But there was a problem. Parkour on Instagram in the early days just wasn't really growing. In my video about how Instagram is killing parkour, I talk about how clips that are short and to the point and attention grabbing do the best on Instagram. So a 10 second clip of someone doing something insane is what is gonna do well on Instagram. People only started to see success on Instagram once they started to adapt to the platform. And that brings us on to parkour on YouTube in 2020. When you've put all this effort into making a video that you're really proud of, and it just does terribly, it can be a little bit demotivating. The old school style of a three minute parkour edit to music doesn't really fit into YouTube in 2020. And there's a really important thing we need to think about, and that is, the algorithm. What's that mean? The algorithm is essentially how the platform decides whose videos to promote. And on Instagram, the parkour community worked out how to play the algorithm. On YouTube, they haven't. <laughs> the YouTube algorithm in 2020 focuses on promoting longer content with a really engaging story and a really interesting thumbnail and title. The old school three minute parkour video doesn't really fit into that structure. So what do we do? Just like how parkour videos adapted to Instagram, parkour videos need to adapt to YouTube. I hear it a lot where people are sort of like, ah, oh, well, just people don't care about parkour on YouTube. And it's not true. Like Stora are a prime example of people really caring about parkour on YouTube. If you look at the free runner Flip Like Z, he's been growing like crazy this year. He's pretty much done YouTube for one year and he's grown incredibly. We all came outside to warm up for a game of stick that we were supposed to film today, and then we got yeah. caught up flipping from the trampoline to this skinny wall right there. I... <laughs> there is an appetite for parkour on YouTube. People just need to do it right. But since rebranding my channel to Jimmy the Giant, I was really mindful of trying to grow on YouTube. And in the last four months or so, I've seen pretty good growth on this platform. And it simply comes down to one key thing. And that is, I adapted my content for YouTube. So how do you adapt your content for YouTube? A thing that really got me thinking when I was rebranding this channel to Jimmy the Giant was that the BMX world and the skateboarding world do incredibly well on YouTube. It's like seven o'clock in the morning. And to me, that kind of tells me there's no reason that parkour can't do well on YouTube. Someone I find really interesting in the skateboarding world is John Hill. I'm gonna show some of his content on screen now. What John Hill does is he takes topics and speaks about them whilst involving skateboarding clips. Because at the end of the day, no matter if you care about skateboarding or not, watching him go to a skate park with one star is interesting to anyone. And that is a really key point. But I'm gonna get onto that in a moment. So where am I? So here is the first bit of advice I can give you. When you first open up YouTube, you're presented with the homepage. If you look at the very top bar, you'll see your recommended tab. And that is where most people are going to click to watch a video. Here's an interesting statistic for you. Something like 80 to 90% of views on your video you'll get 
on YouTube come from YouTube recommending your videos. It doesn't come from people typing in parkour and finding your video, nor does it come from your friends or your subscribers who watch your videos. 80 to 90% of your views comes from YouTube looking at your video and going, hey, we're gonna promote that. So getting your videos in that recommended box on YouTube is the most important thing. You might be thinking, oh, that's good. I'll just try and get my videos into that box. But wait, there's more. Getting your videos in that box is quite hard. And it doesn't stop there. Once you're in that box, you're competing against all the other videos in that box. You are competing against videos like Mr. Beast. I mean, let's just look at this thumbnail. Most people, when they see a video thumbnail like this, they are going to click it. This is the circle. Before your torture begins, let's go over the rules. This white line is the outside of the circle. You can step one foot out, but if both feet leave, you're out. You do not win the 10 grand. And this brings me on to the advice. Every time I went on YouTube, I put a question to myself. I would see all these awesome videos on the recommended bar, but I did something different. Instead of just watching a video like everyone does, I would look at the bar and I would think, which video is grabbing my attention the most? Which video do I want to click? And whenever I would click it, I would take a little screenshot of the thumbnail and I would save it. I created an album, like an inspiration board of thumbnails. And I started to think, what is it about these thumbnails that are making me want to click these videos? I started to notice a trend between some of them. There's a level of intrigue and either education or entertainment in these sort of videos that were making me want to click. That emotional response to these thumbnails is the thing that you need to master. Because your videos are literally competing against Mr. Beast. I get a little bit of stick from people who don't like my titles and my thumbnails. Hey Jimmy, why are you clickbaiting? I don't hear it often, but I hear it now and then. When I make my thumbnails and my titles, I am trying to add intrigue. I'm trying to give a person who doesn't care about parkour a reason to care about parkour. And I, I get that some people see it as clickbait, but this is how I see it. A thumbnail and a title is the packaging. Let's take, I don't know, I don't know, a Rolex watch, for instance. If someone handed you a really nice box that just looked amazing, it was really high quality, and it had a watch inside, versus that same watch chucked inside a Sainsbury's bag and handed to you, and someone held these two things and said, pick one, you're always going to pick the one with the nice packaging. This element is so important, because right now what I see all the time with people's thumbnails and their titles is that they're so obscure, and anyone who doesn't know you or know what you do is never going to watch that video. The main thing I see all the time is a really nice parkour video, and then they title it something like, Live to Move. If I, the viewer, doesn't know who you are, I'm never going to click that thumbnail. You haven't built up enough intrigue. Some people are gonna say, if you look at Thrasher in the skateboarding world, they can kind of title a video whatever. But the thing is, Thrasher has a very recognizable brand name. People see Thrasher, they know it's skateboarding. You and me as small YouTubers don't carry that same kind of clout. People don't know what they're going to get into. And people find this a challenge. They think, oh, I shouldn't have to sell out my videos. I shouldn't have to do all this stuff. It can be easy to get annoyed by that. And I totally understand it, but I'm gonna have to flip this one back at you. Why should people care about your videos? Especially people who don't know who you are. When I think about this whole thing of titles and thumbnails, I think about one thing, and that is accessibility. I was talking to Giles of Motors Projects recently about this, and I came up with this kind of weird analogy, but I think it works. The way I see this whole thing of titling and thumbnailing a video is as this. I'm making that video accessible to people who don't know me or don't know what parkour is. One of my favorite films is called The Intouchables. The Untouchables is this film about a poor man from the ghetto who goes and lives with this extremely wealthy man who is disabled. However, this film is French. The whole film is in French. And you might be surprised to hear this, but I don't speak French. So what did the makers of this film do? They gave the film subtitles. By giving the film subtitles, they made that film accessible to people who don't speak French. And if I bring this back to parkour, by improving thumbnails and titles, you are making your content accessible 
to the people who don't understand the language of parkour. And that is gonna be so key into building your community and the parkour community as a whole. But we'll get into that in a moment. Oh, nearly. That last one was actually close. Oh. That'll do. People and audiences connect to people. People connect to stories. And that brings me on to the next point. Storytelling is the most important thing, especially on YouTube. YouTube promotes videos that are long and engaging. Try it and see this as an opportunity. You now have an opportunity to tell a story deeper than just showing your movement. Show your movement and the story behind the movement. Roof Culture Asia is a perfect example of an amazing story about parkour. Everything is against you, everything. The time, security, the weather, everything is against you. It looks at the lives of these young adventurers traveling to a far, far away place and achieving something amazing. Look, you don't have to make a feature length video like Roof Culture Asia, but just try and bring that mindset into your videos. What stories can you tell and what adventures can you go on that are gonna be interesting to most people? Gonna do one more over there, then I'll do it here. Making a long video engaging is an art, and it's an art that I'm learning now, but it takes a long time. One piece of advice I can give you about editing longer videos is to be really self-critical. When you're watching back your video as you're editing it, put yourself in the shoes of someone who's just discovered you on YouTube. Bearing in mind that person on YouTube doesn't know who you are and doesn't at this point have a reason to care about what you're doing. Be self-critical about your video. Is my video boring? Are there points that need to go? Have I made a really slow intro for two minutes and nothing's happened that I think is really artistic and beautiful, but to anyone watching it, they don't care. They don't know what this video is about. They haven't got the time to waste to watch all that. Just be self-critical about your edits. And I know it can be hard to do that. So here's a tip. Show your video to friends, family, siblings who don't do parkour. Show it to them and ask them to do one specific thing. Give them a bit of paper and a pen. Tell them to make a note every time they've lost interest. If they're bored, if their attention spans waned, if they've picked up their phone, they've lost interest. That's the point you need to work on. Make that bit more engaging. And I'm not gonna give away all my secrets to how I do that, but that's something you need to think about and need to try and learn. And look, you can do all these things and your videos might not get millions and millions of views. Mine don't. Be realistic and persevere, man. This has taken me years. This, this channel was made five years ago and only lately is it getting any traction. If you're serious about this and you wanna push yourself and push parkour, you need to persevere. Don't make five videos and then get demotivated and quit. If you want something bad, you have to work hard for it. People look at Stora and think they just got viral. No, Stora worked so incredibly hard and they still do. They literally make two videos a week and that work ethic is what got them to the place they're at now. I had this time where I had this attitude that why is my content not doing well? I make great videos, why don't they do well? And that's an attitude I had to lose and if you're thinking that as well, that's an attitude that's going to hold you back and you need to get rid of it. If you're trapped in that negative headspace of why isn't it doing well, why don't people care about this? It's their fault, it's the world's fault that people don't have an attention span long enough, etc., etc. You can say all these things, but you're shifting the blame. If you're a great artist and you pride yourself as being a great artist, great art needs to be accessible. And perhaps if you're thinking like this, and certainly this is what I found, Maybe my art wasn't as good as I thought it was. Maybe it could be better. Right now, I make the best content I've ever made. And it only came as a result of accepting this fact that I need to do better and make better content. That brings us to the conclusion of this video. And I have a final point. Why should we do all this? Why should I change my content to fit a mainstream audience? And for me, it's obvious. I want to see parkour grow. I want young free runners who are watching these videos and get inspired to do parkour to think, if I really work hard at this, I could make parkour my career. The more people that make parkour their career, the bigger and more amazing this sport is gonna be. And 10 years time, man, we could see some insane progression in the sport, both movement wise and infrastructure wise. There might be parkour parks everywhere. Normal people might be wearing Farang shirts and Stora shoes. 
Shout out to Frank for sending me this, by the way. You guys didn't have to do that, but I love this shirt. That's the world I want to live in. I want to live in a world where parkour is massive and appreciated for just how amazing it is. But the fault of that doesn't lie on the rest of the world for not caring. It lies on us for not giving people a reason to care about parkour beyond 10 second Instagram clips. In true Jimmy the Giant style, my camera died and I forgot to grab another battery. And that concludes this video. It was unscripted and I kind of just went off of bullet points. This is a style I want to do a bit more because it's easier for me to make these more consistently. I think this conversation is really healthy for the parkour communities. So if you have any more questions, please put them in the comments and I can maybe make videos of them in the future. But for now though, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you're interested in supporting this community, I have a Patreon and I'll leave the link to that in the description. Peace.